First thing I want to, I want to say, we've got six scrimmages coming up Saturday, the 23rd. Let's try to get as, many, as much participation as we can. Okay, let's try to uh, fill those up. Time for us to get in shape and get seen. We got town hall meetings coming up for 100 and, and 125s, December 2nd after the meeting. December 9th is for the 150s. And December 16th is for the 175s and 200s. All those will be conducted after the meeting. Thank you for bringing your canned goods and your, and your foods for a worthy cause. We got a lot to talk about, so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, uh, this past summer we did Tipper F, and uh, I asked Dave Crimmins, the owner of the Texas T Bone Steakhouses here in town, to join us tonight. Uh, without Dave, this event would have not been possible. We, uh, I had the idea uh, to do a fundraiser, and I had some some general ideas of how to do it, but uh, when I got with Dave, he really solidified the plan and made it a very successful event. Obviously, lending us his restaurant for the afternoon to use, uh, and his staff. He probably had six or seven staff members there to help us that were, that were huge. And uh, really, what it came down to was an afternoon uh, for us to get together, have a lot of fun, and raise some money for the official versus cancer. So, Dave Crimmins, come on up here, please. Um, and I didn't find this out till later, but it was actually Dave's birthday, and I don't know if he wants us to know that or not, but it was Dave's birthday on the day of the event, and he volunteered his time uh, to be there for us, and this restaurant is normally closed on the Sundays. Uh, on Sundays, he opened up his restaurant for us on his birthday uh, to run the event. So, a big round of applause for Dave. For uh, so, anyways, when Bill Bill came and and, and uh, brought up the Tipperette thing. I said, well, uh, it sounds like a really good cause. I can't believe how many things you guys do for the Cancer Society and how much money you guys raise. I mean, this is, this is really great. For us to be a part of it, we, we really, we, we really were, were humbled by being able to be a part of it. You know, you guys did all the work. You sold all the tickets. You cooked the food. You prepped the food. You served the food. You cleaned all the dishes. Uh, and, uh, and we really enjoyed having you guys out there. We really appreciate us being a part of it. Uh, really, what I normally try to stay in the background, but when Bill said he wanted to honor me, I go, no. You know, it's you guys that should be honored. I mean, it's your work. It's you giving up of your time for this worthy cause. And I just wanted to say thank you back to you guys because you guys are doing so many things. And we were just a small part of it. But uh, I just want to say thank you, and, and you guys give yourselves a hand, okay? Uh, Dave, the, aso the association came together. We want to give you a few things uh, to display in your restaurant if you want to. Oh, that is beautiful. So there's a plaque for you. Very good. And you can throw, throw a picture of the event next to it if you like. The guys who work the event. Well, very nice. And you can't go without a birthday present, so I, I had a shirt made for you. Oh, Our logo and yours. Uh, wear that around. Happy birthday. <laughs> you know, what, what goes unnoticed about this deal, these guys, it was incredible. You know, the, the cancer journey. Uh, but it was his idea. He did the, he, he brought it to the, to the board. And we said, go with it, and he, it was a one-man deal. Not too many, the only people that helped was that day. So, quite an, quite an undertaking for $3,000 for, for the cancer. So, uh, just a little uh, memento of that, uh, of that day. And then, I'm all about pictures. If you, in the fires and the floods, what's the first thing if you have to be evacuated? I don't know, but for me, along my world, I, I believe in pictures. So, I got this one all fixed up for my friend. 
with everybody in it. People who were there got their names on it and uh, just uh, wanted to give it to him because uh, he deserves it. Thank you. program this year is going to introduce uh, our new officials and their mentors so if we can get them to stand yes. uh, we we'll can get an eye to eye with those people we appreciate it first of all thank you all very much for volunteering even at the last minute I really hope you have a lot so thank you very much um, I'm going to call up the, uh, the mentee and then I'll tell you who your mentor is and we'll stand up so you'll know who you are and who you're supposed to be with uh, also too that uh, I'd like to make sure that we have a little bit more communication between the mentee and the mentor uh, as a mentee, you know, pick up the phone. Any kind of concerns you have with basketball, pick up the phone and talk to your mentor. And mentors, I'm asking you, if you don't hear from your mentee, give them a call, see how they're doing. Right. Any questions or anything before we get started? All right. Good. Uh, Jamin Abeda, are you here? Where are you at? Where are you at? Oh, man, don't suck me out like that. Uh, all right. Okay. Dennis Bremster. Bremser. Here. Where are you? Okay. That is our new one. Mark Bradley? Where are you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and then Dennis Wander, so they're going to be packing off the ACs, so those are your two minutes. Two. Uh, you need Phil Burnett. <laughs> Where's Phil? Oh boy, okay. Well, Shelly Rush, you have it. That's your, that's your mentor. Tara Burns? Nice. Okay. Doug? Doug Nelson, that's yours. I'll be sending you guys an email to verify this. <coughs> Kate Callahan. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, Gary Montel is your mentor. So, God help you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ty Clark. Good Lord. Are they all Okay, Jeff Bevins, you're the mentor. Where is Ty? It's all hand point. Matthew Cleveland. All right, man. Yeah, there we go. All right, man. Yeah. I saw him here. Carrie, quick deal. Where are you? All right. Carrie Whipple will be your man. Brian Cornett. There you go, Brian. Yeah. Hey. Todd Prickle. Where are you? Please stand up. Stand up, stand up. There you go. Uh, Dustin Dunham. Oh. <laughs> Chad, you're his uh, mentor. Michael Flaherty. Oh boy, we're going to have some phone calls tonight. Uh, Ty Armstrong, you're the mentor. Derek LeDuc. All right, Derek's here too. Good, Derek. Yeah, I'm sorry, but Joe Cassis, you're his mentor. <laughs> well, you're you're all you should. <laughs> I don't go for a while, so that's why I can say that. That's good. Bill Lau, there's Bill. There you go, Bill. Right. Uh, Kenny Rankin, where are you? No, it's not really in trouble. No, you're <laughs> Matt Burks. There you go. Uh, John Peterson. Oh, here you are. Well, you were a special ass for that, so you already know who you meant. Okay, Mike Van Loon. Mike, where'd you go? We're going to have a pretty easy class over here. Michael Johnson, you're, a, you're the mentor. All right, Mike, there you are. Thank you. Alvin Rose. Andy, you're his. Uh, Andrew, or uh, Dave Cutie, I'm sorry, Dave Cutie, where are you? Okay. I'll send you guys an email. I'll send an email to both of you guys. To everybody. Okay. Uh, Dan Bermudez, where are you at, Dan? I know I saw you here. Please stand up so we can see you. Okay. And Andy, Eho, you're his mentor. Dan, Dan knows. Appreciate it. Thank you. Patrick Gonzalez. Steve German, you're his uh, mentor. Steve, you're right here? There you go. Uh, Jake Schneider, please stand up. 
you know, you're doing good with the violation, but you need to stand up so you can see that. Uh, yeah, Patrick, pick him. Come on, everyone, say yay! <laughs> responsibility as a rules interpreter. So, the last, over the weekend, we spent six hours in Denver at uh, trying to get the state consistent, and then uh, spent uh, an hour on some uh, national conference calls. So I just want to share briefly the information that I got, and what I sense is I want you to be motivated and be able to adapt to some change along our journey. Change is okay. And I'll tell you a couple of thoughts. Okay, uh, some reminders that came from the from uh, our national interpreter, Peter Webb. Uh, he's a very narrow-minded guy. <laughs> very narrow-minded. Some of you that were evaluated at the state tournament, you know that. So it's okay, because he's all about rules. And I hope that that's which you're concentrated on. We talked about closely guarded last night. If you're just looking in the stands, facing the deal, and not aggressive, six feet, there should be a count. Warnings. There's only four warnings. What are they in the rule book? Name, name one, somebody. Delay. Delay of game, perfect. Two. Reaching over the plane. Drum. Okay, plane violation, good. Three. <clears throat> Huddle in the free throw. <laughs> And the last one? We're not ready. Coming out of a timeout, not ready to play. Okay? There's no, hey, get in the box. <laughs> you don't even warn any kids. That's the only warnings in the rule book there is. All right. We talked about arm leg compression sleeves. New rule, they must be matching. Black leg, black here, everybody on the team. Announcer. <laughs> Somewhere around the country, some guy's doing <laughs> off the chain, you know, scoring the goal and they go all crazy and stuff. It's okay for an announcer to, to say that who scored it and there's a foul and just basic stuff. I don't think we have anybody in here in town. If it's an issue and they get carried away, might want to talk to the home site manager. Talked a lot about PCA and field of vision. Huge deal along the way. Contact. It's in the rule book now. Rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness. Talked about enforcing the rules. Loud and clear. It should never matter what the score is or what time of the game it is. If it's a foul in the first minute, it's a foul in the last second. Some of us and I have been guilty for a number of years. My world is changing because I think the game, the landscape of basketball is changing. Talked about high expectations of veterans. Relight your passion. Wow. What do you do to relight your passion? I don't know. Do some checklists. Check out and see if you, you abide by the signals tonight. Things like that. Okay, our interpreter seminar, which was really cool. There was 18 of us all over the state. There's 1,200 officials, 1,220 officials in Colorado. If we left Iowa, wow. It'd be short, 1,200 guys, ladies. Tom Lopes was there. He flew from Maryland to be with us to six hours to kind of get us going. A fabulous man. 
He's the editor of our of our rule book. His name's right on the front page. He was a, he did the final four. He's he's been with Ibel the last six or seven years and has changed our thinking. Narrow minded is, you know. But still, we still can have our style. So at the interpreters meeting, we talked about five things that we want to talk about in every meeting across the state. We want to talk about signals and mechanics. We want to talk about communication with the coach, traveling, block charge. How many have this book? Put your hand up. All right? I need you to do three plays for me in the next week or two. After the meeting, I want you to come down and I will put you on the agenda because it's a cool book, video, we could we have a lot of conversation maybe about a couple of the plays that are on there. And that's what we want. We want to stir, stir our world and video is the greatest way to stir it. Uh, the other thing that they talk about is control of team player. Uh, on the website, you need to go on iable.org. There are videos of the week. There's five of them. If you have a hard time logging in, just do this. Username, eyeball, small case, and video three. It'll pick it right up. Pretty good plays that uh, Donnie Epley put on there. So check them out. Hopefully that's what we can get done. That's the challenge for us on our website. Okay. I talked about, I talked about signals, contact, mechanics, rule enforcement. There's two teams when they play. Okay, let's have a look at uh, what we're going to talk about tonight, and uh, hopefully this will come up and we'll give it a go. Uh, lights we appreciate it just check this out we're gonna have a little bit of fun here Yeah, right. 
That's the way people did business. So we've come a, come a long way. Okay, tonight we're going to do a couple things about signals. We all know, how many signals are there in the manual? 38. 38. Nice! I didn't have somebody listen. That's cool. All right, we're going to uh, kind of have them. I got uh, my three helpers here today. I want them to stand up for me. This is David Price, and he's been refereed 10 years, except this is his fifth year, and he, 20 years ago, he used to, he used to do it, and uh, he's been to the, uh, the regionals three or four times, and one of the interesting things I found out about David is he worked, or he coached, along McKiernan's journey. So you know what kind of influence McKiernan had, had on us as referees, I can only imagine as a player. So uh, he's gonna be helping it out, and this is uh, Kara, she's been working seven years. She has four wonderful children, and she did the uh, 2A state championships a couple of years ago. So, pretty darn good referee. And this is Ron Crump. He's been, set, uh, no, he's been working 15 years, and Ray told us that he's the number one official in the Black Forest. Were you here last year? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're number one guy. Uh, number one, yeah, right. And he's also <laughs> he's also done some regional finals and uh, is a referee. But what's really cool, he's a cool guy. Okay, thank you. We'll call you up in a second. All right. Signals now. Importance of signals. Maybe you hit the lights just to scotch. That'll maybe help you see this a little better. Thank you. Okay, we know we know the importance of signals. Enable us to share one language, communicate, demonstrate consistency, reflects desired level of professionalism. What bad signals say about you? Indecisive. Trying to sell a bad call. Trying to take the emphasis off the player. Trying to be the show. Don't know the rules. Inexperienced. Lazy, weak, careless. What good signals say about you? You're professional, you're confident, well-trained, experienced, even if you're not, decisive, <coughs> understand the rules of the game. Are you a great communicator? What bad signals do to the game? Confusion, delays, poor tone, opportunity to have, you know, how many times have the score, the score, the buzzer goes off, and you've got to go over and explain what you did or did not do correctly, and your signals, it's all about it. <coughs> what they do for the game, a flow, a tone, raise the level of communication. We need some improvement. This is what, throughout the country, this is the main thing that Tom Lowe talked about. 
And you know in college they're trying to, all they're trying to do in college is get a guy's hand up. They won't even put it up. And we sometimes, oh yeah, I do it. The video shows, no you didn't. So get your hand up, hopefully. Lack of signals, improper signals, informal signals, made up signals. You saw it, you saw that on the video. Are yours clear, crisp, sharp, strong, and proper? Number of areas. Let's look at some weaknesses. Okay, stop the clock. Pretty simple. Preliminary. Okay, we can uh, stand up now. Or turn the lights on for me. At the spot of the foul, we should have a matching thing as the same as we when we go to the box. It should match. When there is a foul, wherever it is. So, we put our fist up. What's the next word that we should use? What's the next thing that you got? Color. This is all at the scene of the crime. Color, number, and infraction. And then you circle the wagons. But oftentimes, what do we do? We hit and run. And if you videoed yourself, Hopefully that you stay. Why do we stay? Why, why do we pause for a second or two? Our partners to see us? What's the other reason? If there's some mischief that we might have with two ball players or three ball players or whatever happened on that particular infraction or on that ruling. Okay, we're gonna uh, demonstrate, all right, my referees are going to do a couple things here. Okay, we're going to do a little flashcard, and uh, if you want to judge them or you know give a critique, it's all fair. Hold up, I don't have my contacts in. <laughs> Put your glasses on. No, I don't. Rip. Okay, hey David, there's the there's the hit the whistle. Oh, good shot. Russian gentleman. All right. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, flip the card out. We'll do the same thing. The whistle came out. All kinds of issues. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> Ho! <laughs> Five. Red. That's it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. Stepping towards the fowler is, is not a bad idea. Okay, go ahead. Three. Three seconds. Three. Three seconds. Get out of there, man. Get out of there. All right. Okay. You can sit down for a minute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reporting. Peter talked yesterday about signals and so did Tom. Do we want them robotic, like the manual? Not a bad word in our world. But there's 38 of them and clear, crisp, sharp. I think we set the standard in the state. When you go to the state tournament, you know that guy's from Colorado Springs. That lady's from Colorado Springs. Know how to, how, when, when do we report the, the, the fouls? 
And you know, do you, you do it down here, you do it up here, you do it up here? No, you just do it very gently right out here. Our numbers, one-handed, right out here. We don't turn them. We flash them nice and smooth. And we stop. We don't walk when we report in, the, in, the, in that area. <coughs> Successful goal, how do you score it? Pretty simple, just nice and relaxed, right in there. No running across the floor like that guy did. <laughs> Sometimes we do overemphasize. And if you have a great whistle, I mean strong, loud, boy, does that separate you from all the rest of the world. Okay, give us a couple more signals here. All y'all, out of here. Is that good? All y'all's gotta work. Travel. Okay. <laughs> Travel. Okay. How how do we out in the crisp sharp way? How do we give a direction signal? Okay. Okay. All right. In the IABLE world, if you work in Maine and you did this or this, you would not work in the state tournament in Maine. Now, does this look right, or does shooting guns look right? I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Delay, <coughs> leg violation. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Okay, go. Bad Trump. 
Colorado Springs, 3A championships are coming to the Air Force Academy. Yay. I'm also going to lead this effort, but I need some volunteers. I need somebody to lead the hospitality suite. I need people to man, man that uh, suite every day. I need a director of security for the officials. I need people to uh, help out with getting officials to and from the floor. What a great way to get a free ticket to the 3A playoffs. So if you're interested in that, let me know after the meeting if you don't mind. Next slide, please. Guess what? IABLE's coming back. They're going to videotape the Colorado State Championships, and they're going to use that video 
you make the call video. You know, all the time we were laughing at all the guys from Delaware, Rhode Island, well, they'll have their chance too because they'll be laughing at us. So, uh, working on your mechanics and signals, do it the Iowa way during the season. I know what site they're going to, but I won't reveal that. Uh, so, uh, all I can say is that bring your A game and you get to the state championships. Here's a great one. Dirty High School, freshman team. They want to use three officials. But they want a 125, 150 official in that game. So we're going to put some veterans on the game along with some folks that have the opportunity to work three person. And that should be a great time. So some of you may have an opportunity if Mr. Montel gets well to work with Gary at the freshman games. <laughs> and Mr. Lutz has volunteered to be at that level as well. Absolutely. So I think that's great for this association. <coughs> Let's. Evaluations. They did a great job last year getting evaluations completed. 361 completed. 73 was not completed. A little disappointed on that, but uh, group average is 3.45 out of 5. I added a checklist, sent out an email, I think it was yesterday. Added a checklist so you can print that checklist. You can have it prepared. It'll just take you with you to your game. Use that as a cheat sheet. So when you complete, when the game is completed, you can access the uh, evaluation in Arbiter and complete it in Arbiter as well. If you have any, if you want to improve the form, more, I, I don't care. Just let me know how to improve it, how to make it better. That's what I want to make it better for this organization. Okay. Any how questions on that? How do we? Do we have to check with you, or can we do it auto assign? Or how does that look? Normally, the when you want to be scheduled for an evaluation, we'll put you in Arbiter. But to be quite honest, I'd rather show up unannounced. Because guess what? If Max knows that I'm coming out to evaluate him, he's going to bring his A++ game. And if I show up unannounced, I hope he still brings his A++ game. But sometimes people do not <coughs> realize that you're being watched. So they're slacking. So as an evaluator, Bob Lansing's philosophy, I would rather just show up. So I'm not going to tell you. You want to get evaluated by me? I'll say, yeah, maybe, but my schedule allows it. But I'm not going to commit into Arbiter. If you want to commit into Arbiter, I can assign you as, a, as an evaluator. OK? And after the game, you can go into the evaluation form and complete the form. All right, so we don't have to check with you. You should check with me because I have to schedule you as an evaluator. If you after, want to be scheduled. After the fact, you can do it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Next. All right, this is what evaluations are important. <coughs> they serve as a tool for us to get promoted. And uh, what I do at the end of the season, I print every evaluation out and I go through every evaluation and I bring a summary to the ranking assessment committee. <coughs> so I'm looking at 360 plus evaluations over the course of the non season. I want you to be, can you go back please? Yeah. Please just be specific in your evaluations. For example, uh, Joe Smuggatelli should be considered for promotion to 125 and be considered for varsity science up to the 3A level or 4A, 5A, or whatever level you want to recommend. But you as an evaluator, you serve a vital role in that person getting promoted or demoted or getting varsity games or no varsity games. Okay? <coughs> Is Joe still involved with this? Joe Smug can tell he's all he's my brother. Okay. Next slide. <laughs> all right, so let me give you an example. We got an official at 150. He gets five evaluations. Average is 3.9. Then he sends me an email that he wants to be considered uh, be promoted to a 125. Well, after I look at all these evaluations, he got evaluated at the JV level. We know at the 125 level, that's a varsity level official. So when I look at this, I'm thinking, well, you're a solid JV official. <coughs> solid. Nowhere in the evaluations does it tell me that <coughs> hey, this person should be promoted to 125, should be considered for varsity level games, so forth and so forth and so forth. Okay? So as an evaluator, please be specific and let us know if this person should be promoted and what level of game he or she should call. Next slide, please. 
Does the, <coughs> Bob, does the evaluator know what rank that person is? Yes. Okay. If you don't know, call me and I'll let you know. Okay. Does it make a difference? Yeah, absolutely, it should not make a difference. That's a good point, Kevin. Well, then that's what I'm saying. Would they know that they're going to, yeah. that they should be, you know what I mean? If they don't know their, their number, then why would they say they should be moved up? Well, you know what your ranking is. Everybody in this room knows right, what their ranking right. is. So if I'm a 150 and I want to get promoted to 125. But the evaluator's the one that says they should move up. They think Right, they that's move. correct. Not you, the evaluator. Correct. So the evaluator might not know what number they are. They Why should not. It might be so a 175 out there that does a real great job. And the, the evaluator says, well, we... We should promote him to uh, 150 or... But if he doesn't know the number, that's okay. what I'm saying. No, I don't know. Just tell me. Stay at JV, stay at that level, be promoted. And if you want to promote him to a varsity official, tell me what level. So I know So that. they should know that they're not a varsity official. But you're working a JV game, you're not a varsity official. Or a freshman game. So no, no varsity officials work JV games? Some did. I'm sorry. So what, what is your point? I'm just saying, does the evaluator know what your ranking is? In other, okay, so how would they say then this official should be ask, moved ask up? The That's the what I'm saying. Yeah, ask the official. Right. Or before going to the court, you can give me a call and say, hey, I'm evaluating Sandra Mann. What ranking is she? Okay, great. That's and all. I'll say yeah. Sandra ranking right. is. Right, okay, yeah. 150. That's what I am. Yeah, 150. Okay. So we talked about the lesson learned from that particular scenario a few minutes ago. Uh, next slide, please. All right. Any questions on the evaluation process? Okay, we're trying to make it. Yeah, in Arbor, you can't get to the evaluation form until the game has occurred. After the game's completed, then you can get into the form. That's why I created a checklist. So you can print it out, it's, a, it's the exact form that's on the arbiter side. So use that as a checklist, pick, take a lot of notes, and then it makes your job easier when you go into the form. Okay. Uh, this came from the coaches at a coaches meeting. They want us to put our photos on the in arbiter so they know who you are when you get there. Sometimes an official will do a great job and they have no idea who that person is. Well, if they do a terrible job, then it's a good idea not to have your picture on our <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, If it helps, I'm going to be at Sand Creek on the 26th, and I'll be at Pine Creek on the 30th. So if you want, us to, if you want me to watch you, I'll be glad to do that, but you've got to sign up. So. And, uh, you know, my philosophy now is let's do it the right way. Okay. Any questions? Yes? On the uh, 55, anybody want one? If they'll let me know, I'll get that done for them. Okay. Go ahead with your call or email. I got a studio now. You want a studio? Big time. Is it? Well, I am just kind of curious, though. In your, in your photo world, I see you at the Nuggets, the Bronco game, the Air Force Academy game. and Are you getting paid well enough to have a studio now? Yeah, I like that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Hey, uh, some of you go to bed, count sheep. I go to bed, count these blue folders here. We've got 20 scrimmages now, okay? And uh, I'm kind of taking this one day at a time, okay? I'm worried about Saturday scrimmages. Like Raymond Joe said, we have six scrimmages Saturday. Okay. We have zero officials at Woodland Park, and we have zero officials at Falcon High School for this Saturday. Okay, We need some help on those two sites. Uh, we also need some help at CSCS. Okay? So if you would, take a look at this. We, you know, I, I know what some of your fears are, because I had this happen to me several times, where I go to a gym and I get stuck there the whole day. Right? So if you just want to sign up for two hours, look, I'm only going to be there 9 to 11. And if, you, if there are no officials and you have to leave at 11, just go ahead and take off. Nobody's going to lasso you or cuss you out for doing that. Okay? If you'd only be there from 1 to 3, whatever, just come down and put that down and that will help us out. Okay? Because we don't expect somebody to be out there for six hours. I mean, it's just ridiculous to 
think that. And we've, we've communicated to these coaches that, you know, this is on a voluntary basis only, and that's the way it's going to be. So if you can help us out, Carlos is the site supervisor at Woodland Park. He's the only one that's going to be at Woodland Park. And that's a two-hour time frame from 12 to 2, one court. Okay, so it's not that hard to do. I know Woodland Park is a ways away. But uh, if you can help us out on that, I'd appreciate it. Andy is the site supervisor for Falcon. He's the only one. I'll feed you. And he said he would feed you guys and make sure you got plenty of Gatorade. So if, it, if you can help us out, please come down tonight and take a look at that. And what I mean, I'm only taking them one day at a time. We're, di we're going to handle Saturdays. Next Monday night, we got a scrimmage on Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Uh, Friday, we have one scrimmage. And then next Saturday, a week from the Saturday, we have eight scrimmages on the 30th. Carrie's at Simla. She's the only one at Simla on the 30th. Okay, so we, we need to know that. Okay, so if you can help us out, please come down and sign up. We sure appreciate it. Okay, guys? Thanks a lot.
Wait, sorry. July and June. Yeah, July and June. So the cancer money that we had from this year came after that tax. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, it will be put in the notes. Which will then be posted on the list. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming, and let's try to get some of these streamers. Woo! If you were an 